Hello everyone, I'm Scott Witte, Director of Horticulture here at Cantini Park. And I am joined by Robert Carr, AKA Bob Carr, Greenhouse Manager. And he is the expert on all things poinsettias here at Cantini. I've been getting so many questions coming in from our members and our visitors about poinsettias. I thought what better way to have the expert himself give you the most information we can on poinsettias. So, Bob, why don't you give us a little history on poinsettias? Well, Scott, funny you, you should ask. Uh, Joel Poinsett was a botanist, physician, and ambassador to Mexico who brought the poinsettia to America back in the 1820s. They're originally from a mountainous area of Mexico that ranges somewhere between 60 and 85 degrees. In the wild, they would be a shrub about 15 to 20 feet tall and predominantly red. That is fascinating. So, Joel Poinsett, Poinsettia, I get it. I mean, how great would it be to have a plant named after you, Robert? I go by Bob. Yeah, but you see what I did there, right? Robert Plant. Okay. Um, bad joke. So Bob, I hear these plants are toxic. What's up with that? Well, Scott, the poinsettia is a member of the euphorbia family and the euphorbia family has cousins in it that are like this euphorbia fire sticks. The sap of the euphorbia fire sticks can cause irritation and swelling and an allergic reaction and it is a lot more irritating than the poinsettia sap. Okay, that's, that's good to know. So, it doesn't kill cats? It doesn't kill cats. You have a cat, don't you, Bob? I do have a cat. No incidences? My cat has tried to eat the poinsettia every year. Why don't we move on to the next topic? Sounds good. So, Bob, when do we start growing these plants? Well, that's a good question, Scott. Uh, we start poinsettias as early as June. This would be started in late June. This one started in early July, late July, early August, and late August. That's fascinating. So the only difference between this plant and that plant over there is time. That is correct. Well, it's about time. It is about time. You know, interesting factoid, since 1970, there were 33 songs titled Time. Hmm. Anyway, maybe that means it's time to move on to our next segment. I think so. Okay. So thanks for covering that thing about time, Bob. But now I want to know a little bit more about how you start the plants. That's another good question. Small cuttings that we receive are, are rooted in Oasis foam. Each cutting is a genetic clone that carries the characteristics of a specific variety. The different varieties are mutations, some of which are brought about by the use of x-rays and other techniques. Mutants? You mean like gamma rays in the Incredible Hulk, or Marvel's super soldier serum, or Spider-Man spider bites, that kind of stuff? Well, kind of. Well that is awesome. Let's talk about these mutants. We grow 13 to 16 varieties of poinsettias each year, all of different colors. There are approximately 100 different poinsettia varieties on the market, and about 60 to 70 percent are just different colors of red. Wow, 60 to 70 percent of the 100 varieties are shades of red. That's even better than gray. Hey Bob, so what kind of problems do you encounter while you're growing these poinsettias? That's another good question. We encounter things like fungal root rots, fungus gnat larvae. So there's fungus among us? Yeah, kinda. Uh, white flies, powdery mildew, and splitting. Splitting is an interesting condition of poinsettias where when they reach 20 to 30 leaves, they will split into three stems. So if I'm hearing you correctly, Bob, 
once they get all those leaves on a stem, instead of leaving, they just split. Yeah. <laughs> so I think one of the most important questions we need to answer today is, once I get my poinsettia home, how should I take care of it? Ideally, you would put your poinsettia in a well-lit area of your house, somewhere away from heat or cold drafts. And one of the keys to keeping your poinsettia healthy is adequate watering. I like to wait until the plant is very dry, and then I would take it out of the sleeve, uh, and then take it to the kitchen sink, and water it thoroughly until water pours out the bottom. The key is to wait until it stops dripping before you put it back into the foil cover. Is it done yet? Not yet. Is it done yet? Not quite yet. It is one of the most important parts of your poinsettia watering. Duly noted. So Bob, what if I want to keep my plant longer than after the holidays? I heard a rumor that most people just throw them away. Yeah, most people do throw them away, but you can keep your poinsettia until next year. The key to doing that would be to take it outside in the early summer when the temperatures are above 50 degrees, prune it back really hard because that'll encourage new good growth and a stronger plant, and then you leave it outside in the summer and it'll grow like crazy because it just loves our environment. At the end of the summer, you would want to bring your poinsettia in when the temperatures start to get around 50 degrees at night. That typically happens the end of August or early September. The key to getting your poinsettia to bloom again is to give it the right amount of darkness. Without the right amount of darkness, it'll end up like this one that had street lights that kept it from turning color on time. Well, thanks, Bob. That was another great factoid about poinsettias. And I can't help but think of an amazing song by Simon and Garfunkel, Hello Darkness, My Old Friend, perhaps. But anyway, I hope you all are no longer in the dark when it comes to all things poinsettias. Thanks for joining us, and have a happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs>